YouTube! My name is Josh and I want to welcome you to our channel. Today's video is exciting for a number of reasons. The first of which is that this is a world first. It's something that nobody has ever done, nobody has ever seen, and we're here to share it with you. As you've probably figured out already, we're here to talk about streaming an original Xbox to something else. It could be another computer, it could be your smartphone, even something like an Nvidia Shield TV. And then on top of all that, you get great games on the original Xbox that you never saw again. Stuff like Amped 2, Crimson Skies, the Halo series, and Rainbow Six. Now with all of that said, I do realize that the original Xbox is an older console. This project is actually something that I've wanted to do for many, many years, and we finally are reaching the point with technology that we can do it. And it's still worth doing. The original Xbox is great for split-screen gaming, and when you combine that with something like Parsec, it means that you can stream your games and have somebody over the internet play those games with you in split-screen. And that's a really big deal. On the Xbox, almost every single game supports split screen in some way. So it's either going to be for competitive multiplayer or for co-op or something along those lines. It's one of the only consoles that supported it as a default for most games. So it's really worth enjoying this way. It's great for streaming. So let's talk about the video. In this video, we're going to start by showing you some gameplay, so you'll see exactly what it's like to stream the Xbox to different devices, and then after that, we're going to show you how to do it for yourselves. So you'll learn exactly what you need to use, how to set it all up, so that you can try exactly what we're doing today. But before we get into all that, I do have a special request. Like I said earlier, this is a world first. It's the very first time that an original Xbox is being streamed to something else. And this is a Flickstick thing. We came up with this. It's really a Flickstick community thing, and I'm proud of it. So I'd love it if you guys go out and spread this video. Share it on at least one of your social medias. Let's blow this up and make it go viral. I'd really appreciate it. Now, without any further ado, let's jump right into some gameplay.
All right, so let's talk about those videos just a little bit. In the first video, you saw me playing the Xbox on my host PC. So I gave you a quick idea of what it's like to fire up the Xbox and then play it on the PC that it's connected to, and you got to see how the software was launched and all that stuff. And then in the second video, I was streaming Crimson Skies over my local network to a Surface Pro. And then for the last video, and I think that's probably the most exciting video, I was streaming the game over the internet to my brother in Texas, who's over a thousand miles away, and we played local split-screen multiplayer for Halo 2, which is absolutely amazing. There's not another way to have that experience. So that, hopefully that gives you an idea of what this is all about. And if you want to try this for yourself, then you're in the right place because that's coming up next. We're going to start by talking about all of the parts that you'll need to try this for yourself at home. To begin, you'll need some sort of host computer. It can be a desktop just like you see in the picture. It can also be a laptop and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. And then obviously you do need an original Xbox. It needs to be in working condition. You might have noticed in the video if you're an Xbox fan that I am using a modded Xbox. That's not technically required. You can do this with an untouched Xbox that's just normal and has never been modified. I'm only using a modded version so that I can install my game collection on the hard drive, which makes it easier to stream and easier to switch games. Next, you'll need some sort of HDMI adapter for the Xbox. This will allow you to connect it to a capture card later. And you'll notice in the picture that I'm using one from the Pound brand. And I'd highly recommend going for this one. I got mine on Amazon. You'll find a link in the description for it. This one performs really well and there's no lag or any kind of quality loss. So it's a great option. Lastly, you'll need a few cables and a few adapters. You will need a standard micro USB cable. You'll also need an Xbox to USB adapter. So we're talking about going from Xbox controller connection to USB. You will also want an OGX360 adapter, and we'll talk about that more a little bit later, a Titan 1 adapter, and then lastly, some sort of capture card. Now in my video, I used an Avermedia capture card. It's an older broadcaster model. It's hard to find and the drivers aren't optimized for Windows 10, so it's kind of a pain. I would actually recommend that you guys go out and get an Elgato card. The one in the picture is their HD60 Pro, which goes inside of a desktop tower. If you are using a laptop as your host, you can get the HD60S model and that'll work as well. Here's a quick overview of how everything comes together to create this experience. Now in this diagram, go ahead and assume that your capture card is installed in that tower. And then from the tower, you're going to connect a mini USB cable to the Titan 1. The Titan 1 then plugs into the OGX360 adapter. Now the OGX360 adapter is really special and really unique. It was the last piece of this whole thing and it took a while to find, but it does exist and I'm so grateful for it. This is basically an adapter that allows you to connect an Xbox 360 controller to an original Xbox. And for our purposes, it makes the Titan 1 think that it's plugging into an Xbox 360. Now you can get this adapter directly from the developer, which is what I did, or you can build one yourself. It uses an Arduino board and there will be instructions for that in the description if you want to do it yourself. From there, you're going to plug a micro USB cable into the OGX 360 and then connect that into an Xbox to USB adapter, which then goes to the console. The last step is to connect the HDMI adapter to the Xbox and then run an HDMI cable to the capture card that's in your tower. So you can see that it creates a nice neat circle and everything connects together. Now I do want to take a moment to show you exactly how the Titan 1, the OGX 360, and the cable adapters to the Xbox come together. It's really important to plug them in in the correct order and I'll show you that right now. You'll start by connecting your Xbox to USB adapter to the controller port of your Xbox. I prefer controller port number one and then plug the other side of that into the micro USB cable. From there, plug the smaller side of the micro USB cable into the first port of the OGX 360. You'll see some lights on the OGX 360 once there's a connection. Next, take your Titan 1 adapter and plug it into the USB port. You'll see some lights on that as well, and then your last step is to connect a mini USB cable into the Titan 1. The other side of that cable is going to the computer, and that's basically it. At this point, we've covered all of the physical hardware components and all of the connections for those components. Now it's time to talk about software. 
Ultimately, the software side of this is really, really simple and really easy. There's only two things you have to worry about. There's one program called GIMPSC that handles the controller, so it gets the controller out of all those adapters and into the computer and sends signals back and forth. And then your second piece of software is your capture card program. So for me, I'm using an Avermedia capture program that displays what the card sees and lets you play with it in real time. For you, hopefully you're using an Elgato card and you'll use the Elgato capture software for your side of things. Now let's talk a little bit more about GIMSC. So GIMSC is a free software. It is designed to take the controller input from your computer. So that can be a physical controller, you know, one that's hooked directly to the host computer, or it can be a virtual controller. So something from Parsec or any other streaming software. This actually works with a variety of softwares. Now in GIMSC, you do need to set up some sort of profile for the controller that you're using. So you're programming the buttons to show up correctly through the software. Now we've actually done the hard part for you. We've created a streaming profile that works with Parsec. It works with the Nvidia Shield. It even works with virtual desktop on a VR headset. So all you need to do is download that. We'll show you where to put it and then you're ready to get going. You'll start by visiting the GIMSC website. From there, click on their downloads link and it's going to take you to their GitHub page. Download the latest version for Windows and save it on your computer. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and install it. It's just a standard installer, very easy to use. Now for this step, make sure that you've already downloaded the profiles that are in our description. When you have, go ahead and open them up and then open up a second window. You're going to click on your C drive and then go into your user folder. Click on your user and then we're going to go down to app data. Once that's open, click on Roaming, and then look for the GIMPSC folder. From here, open up the config folder, and then we're just going to copy over the profiles that you downloaded. Our last step is putting everything together. Start by opening up GIMPSC, select your Titan 1 adapter, and then select your streaming controller profile. Lastly, under the mouse capture settings, Change it from auto to being off. And then you're welcome to check the profile just to make sure everything looks good. And if it does, you can start it. From here, it's time to open up your capture card software. Now again, for me, that's Avermedia. For you, it might be Elgato. And once it is open, make sure that you put it into a live mode so that you can see it in real time. And that's basically it. At this point, you should be able to see your console and control it with your controller in real time. Now after all of that, we may not have convinced you to go out and get your own original Xbox. And that's okay, you won't hurt our feelings. But you might be wondering, so how does all this apply to me? What should I get from this video? Is there any value with all of this outside of the original Xbox? Well, you'll be happy to know that the answer is definitely yes. The concepts in this video can be applied to almost any console. You can use it with an Xbox One or a PS4 or even a Nintendo Switch. Now because you're a savvy gamer, you might be quick to point out that both the Xbox One and the PS4 can already do streaming without any of this stuff. And you'd be correct, however, one thing that you gain by using this setup is lower latency and much better video quality. Those of you that have been with us for a while already know that programs like Parsec, Rainway, and Moonlight offer way lower latency and way better video quality than what's offered by Microsoft or Sony. So this setup makes a lot of sense. And even when you factor in the adapters, the latency is still quite a bit better. All right, now I know that this video was a lot to take in. There's a lot of detail and I hope that everything made sense. We're really glad that you made it this far. And if you did, we really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, you really should consider doing so. We cover cloud gaming and game streaming, new videos every Wednesday. There's a lot to see. Now, even if you are already a subscriber of Flickstick, there's still more for you as well. Take a look below this video. You're going to see a button to join Flickstick. When you join, you get two special things. One is that you get a special avatar that makes your comments and your chats really stand out. The longer that you're subscribed, the better and more elaborate your avatar gets. So it really makes you look special. And then on top of that, 
you gain access to extra video content from Flickstick. So for example, for this video, if you head over to the discussions area under the community tab, you're gonna find extra videos just for you that nobody else gets access to. So extra gameplay, all kinds of good stuff. And that's gonna be about it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Like I said earlier, be sure to share it. Let's make this go viral. And until next time, my name is Josh, and you guys have a good one.